Mitch Lee here again, Ableton Certified Trainer, Beat Drop Instructor, and this is part two of our two-part series on how to properly save your Ableton Live sessions or projects so that it will play properly when the other person is loading it up. How's that for a title for a tutorial? Anyway, in part one of our tutorial, we talked about saving a project that only had Ableton Live instruments and effects. And now in this one, we want to talk about how to properly save it if you have third-party instruments or effects. First of all, you need to take stock of which tracks are actually using third-party instruments or effects. And remember, if the person you are sharing the session with doesn't have those third-party instruments or effects, they're not going to hear anything on that track. Or if they have the instrument but not the effects, they're not going to hear it the way that it was intended on being heard. So, what is a third-party instrument or effect? Well, on this song, I have this track, Lead High, and I have an instance of Massive, and I have an instance of Sugar Bites Wow Filter. So this would be an example of an instrument made by Native Instruments. This would be an example of an effect. Now, if my party on the other end does not have these, they're not going to hear this properly. So what do we do? Well, to solve this issue, we need to bounce or render down this track to an audio file. So the first thing I like to do is to duplicate the track with the third party instruments and effects. You can right click, duplicate. And the reason that I do this is it just gives us me more options later on and you'll see why in a second. Uh, the second thing we want to do is right click again and we're going to go freeze track. This is the duplicated track that I just did and what happens now is Ableton is going to render an audio file, it's going to bounce this track and it's going to play an audio file in the background. If I hit play you'll see it's going to turn blue symbolizing that this track is actually frozen if I hit solo. So, so this track is actually playing an audio file and it's not actually playing this MIDI and it's, this is actually all frozen. These instruments and effects are actually um, disabled. This is a great way, by the way, to free up some CPU power if you are starting to choke. Now what we want to do is go all the way with this, right click and we're going to flatten this. And what this does is then reveal the audio file that it rendered out earlier. And if we double click on the track header, you'll notice that there's no effects or instruments there. It's purely audio. What I like to do for this next step is to make sure I rename this and I'll keep the name. I'll keep it the same lead high and I'll add a, the letter B just for bounce. It just helps me understand this is bounce down. I'll keep the colors the same and I will make sure to turn this track off. So when he is playing it back or she's playing it back, they're going to get the, they're going to get the actual audio file here. So go ahead and continue that process of duplicating, freezing and flattening tracks that have third party instruments and effects. Once that is done, make sure you label them properly so it's nice and clean and easily to be understood by the person that you're collabing with or the person that you're sending this to or for future you who have opened up an old archive of a track. Once that's done, we're going to do the same process as we did in part one. We're going to go up to file save live set as pick our destination and you can see I've already been saving that you can click save if you haven't done that and then we go file collect all and save I select the last two typically to be safe we can turn these all on click OK now to confirm the file structure I'm going to go to my desktop I'm going to click on my housed out project you'll notice there's a samples folder and now our new freeze files are actually going to be in our process folder. But they're all there. Our freeze folder, our samples, everything's there. And again, we're going to right click on our project folder, compress, make a zip file. This, file, this one's going to be a little bit bigger because it has a full audio frozen file. This one's 53 megabytes. We're going to then share that in our Dropbox, um, share it on you send it or we transfer or box.net, whatever uh, service you like to use. But that's how to do it properly, and that's you're gonna save a lot of headaches if you follow those steps. All right, take it easy.